Oh, let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let me hear your voices. God wants to hear your voice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Well, bring you greetings from the sunny side of the Rockies. <laughs> and we're happy that we're here, glad we're here. You can be seated for a moment, and we'll get to the word of the Lord. I just am grateful and appreciative of uh, being here. As a matter of fact, these days you're just happy to be about anywhere. Amen. But uh, we're glad that and feel good and thank this committee uh, headed by Brother Hyler for the privilege and honor of being here. And, uh, you know, there's a familiar sound up here, and it's the sound of a Leslie rattling through the deal there. See, I, this ain't my first rodeo. I've been around this a while. Amen. And thank you, sis. But uh, we are so grateful and privileged and honored to be here. Thanking you again for uh, the invitation to be here. We tried to make this happen a long time ago. And then, then that, uh, that thing that comes sweeping through here shut everything down. But uh, I got here. Amen. I got here. And uh, maybe, maybe the Lord would help us to bless you today. Amen. Thank you for the very comfortable room and for the food that you put placed in that basket and uh, for all the good things, the kindness. Man. And I want to thank my grandson-in-law. We quit calling him in-law a long time. He's just our grandson. He married Andrea a couple of years back, and this fall on supposedly September the 27th, I'm going to be, I'm going to prove that I'm a great grandfather. Man, I've always been a great grandfather, but now I'm going to have some proof. Amen. And uh, thank you, Brother Morton, for the good conversation we had this morning. He told me all about his great a grandchild and uh, made me get excited. Going to run all the grandkids off and just, yeah. All right. Well, we're happy about that. I uh, cannot express enough how I feel about last evening's message. And uh, Brother Dudley has been a lifelong friend. Some of you that heard him preach say, oh, if I had a mind like that, I don't want to embarrass him, but I want to tell you, he don't have a mind that's any different than most minds. I've known him since he was a babe in arms. I knew his parents many years before that. And uh, uh, just give me time, Brother Dudley. I'll get this straightened out. But uh, I knew him when he was learning to talk. I knew him when he was running his, what's that little old thing that had a motor on the back and is uh, used flying through the mud holes, splashing mud everywhere. And uh, I saw him over in uh, Independence, Kansas, and he's just grown up. I want to tell you about his mind. He has all of that in his mind because he applied himself to the Word of God applied himself to a consecration that's uh, deep within the heart of God. And that's what causes a man like that to come to this desk and preach that kind of information we got last night. And then, oh my, what a message we heard. We Thank you, Brother Dudley. You, he, Amen. One time I heard him preach. I just walked up to him and I said, would you sign my Bible, please? <laughs> Most of us know what that means, but amen. And uh, he knows this, and the message he preached is, uh, I hope some folks hear it again. And I have requested that between my death and my funeral, Brother Jonathan Dudley preached that message. 
It'll be a while now. Just hang in there. And ain't ain't going to die yet, me and Brother Morton. We decided if uh, things don't hurry up, we're going to have to preach our own funerals. <laughs> Amen. They're dying all around us, and we're grateful. But thank the Lord here in my 70s that I'm able to stand this desk and preach at least for 16 more days. And then I'm going to wave by like you did, Brother Morton, and here we go on up the highway, see what's up there. Well, y'all are the quietest apostolics. I try to be a little humorous. You don't even know how to laugh. What's, what's going on with y'all? Man. Well, let's stand together. Let's get to the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I was telling you, it was, and I got my thoughts on my great-granddaughter showing up, but Brother Juan found out I was coming. He decided I'm going with Pops, and I'm going to drive, and I'm going to take care of him. Boy, he's taking good care of me. Amen. And thank you, Juan, for being my travel buddy this week. Praise God. Lord bless you. I... Uh, Boy, you know, I don't even want to have to try to qualify about what I'm going to talk about and teach about and preach about. I don't want to have to qualify it. You just take it and judge it tomorrow after I get through tomorrow because uh, I have another part of this that I plan to bring tomorrow if the Lord allows it. But I want to read to you from the uh, book of John chapter 4. And uh, and we'll read from the word of the Lord. Our fathers, that's verse 20, John 4, 20. Man, our fathers worshiped in this mountain. He's talking to the woman at the well. He has already exposed who she is, what she was, and the fact that she had 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 five husbands and was living with a man that wasn't her husband. And, and uh, she said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And he said, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in, at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know that we what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Very familiar reading. Let's ask the Lord together that he would help this preacher today and help me to teach what I feel to do. God, in Jesus' name, I love you, I thank you, I worship you. Now, God... Be in this house with me, Lord. Help me, I pray, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. You can be seated. Amen. My topic and subject today, I want to talk a little while about biblical worship. Biblical worship. Worship as it is illustrated in the Bible. Could you just bear with me a little while? Could you let me talk about biblical worship? Now, don't anybody get twisted up. Don't anybody judge what I'm going to talk about. Uh, give me at least till tomorrow night. Then you can throw rocks. Amen. But uh, until then, just, just let me tell you this and let me help you with this. Amen. Worship from the Bible is perhaps uh, 
through time and the flight of time and the years and the centuries has changed uh, the meaning to us of the word worship. You drive by denominal churches and you see signs that say worship services. And uh, then we use the word, and I'm totally for it, but let's worship the Lord. But uh, can I just define it a little closer? I keep turning around to these good singers and thinking there ought to be a dozen preachers sitting there. Would y'all just act like preachers today? All right, because I've been known to get involved with those on the platform when I preach. So uh, just, just bear with me. But uh, if, if I could just get this started and get going, I want to, I want to get us out of here in short order today. I don't, I'm not a long-winded preacher. And so uh, if you will let me, I want to get to the Word of God. Amen. When we are going to look at worship, we're going to look at it from a Bible perspective, totally from a Bible perspective. And in order to look at that, we must look at the word worship. And we need to use what most scholars would look at, and that is the law of first mention. Bible scholars and students of the Bible when they find a word, they track it back to the first time. God in his providence and his wisdom, he has certain things in the Bible that never, never change. The word abomination is one of those. God never changes his mind about an abomination. And I don't think he's changed his mind about worship. Praise God. And so I'm going to, uh, let, me, let me read you my notes. I want to sound as much like Brother Dudley as I can. Some Bible students use the law of first mention as a guideline of study in which they find the first time a word, idea, or doctrine is introduced in Scripture to better understand the other references. The idea is that the first time it is mentioned will be the simplest, most understandable reference from which, uh, which the others build. The idea is that God, when, that when God first presents a word or principle, it will always be consistent in the future uses. And over 177 times that I have tracked the word worship means the same thing. The same thing. In the, in the Hebrew, I won't try to pronounce the word, uh, shakal, that's as good as I can get. A primitive root, it means to depress, or that is to prostrate, especially reflexively in homage to royalty or God. Bow self down. Bow self down. And crouch. Fall down flat. Humbly beseech. Do make obeisance. Do reverence. Make to stoop. It means to worship. In the Hebrew New Testament, it, it has another, and I'm sure not going to try that one, from and probably a derivative of meaning to kiss, like a dog licking his master's hand, to fawn or crouch to, that is literally or figuratively prostrate oneself in homage, to reverence, to adore, to worship. That's consistent throughout the Bible when it refers to worship. I love to be in the presence of God. <clears throat> but if I could picture to you and other uh, from the Jewish history of this, they have, uh, they have uh, explained it a little further. But it means uh, to be obedient. 
It means to be submitted. Obedience, uh, obedience, excuse me, obedience and submission. Trying to say two words in one in one word there, but uh, that's what worship is all about. Don't care how loud you get, how much you stomp, how much you dance. If there is not obedience and submission to God, it's all in vain. It's all in vain. And the first time it is mentioned in the scripture is on this wise. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning Morning, saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. This then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes uh, uh, to a far off. But he said, I am the child Go there to worship. We going to the top of Mount Moriah to worship. Our purpose is here. The very first time that worship is mentioned in the Bible, it is telling us, telling us of a man who became obedient to the voice of God. A man who came, became submissive to his will. And that pattern follows out all 177 times throughout the scripture. Worship is obedience. Worship is submission to God. <laughs> I, can, I can see him now when he left uh, two of his servants in the parking lot with his mules and said, now I am the child. Let me, let me just back up a minute right here. And, and uh, let me tell you that God said, I want you to take Ishmael, or I want you to take Isaac, thine only son. Wait a minute, God. You know I got two sons. You know, you know he, could have, he could have argued with God about, uh, about his sons. But Ishmael was not according to the promise of God. Ishmael was Abraham's mistake. And God is willing to forgive our mistakes. I just need to patch this in here so you can hear it. He will forgive your mistakes. But God wants to own your miracle. And Isaac was a miracle sent from God. What are you saying? Abraham could not brag about it because it was a miracle. It was God's, God's plan, God's will, God's way. But anytime God does something for you, be sure that you give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. He owns that miracle. You don't. He healed you of cancer. Let God own it and give him the glory. He, woo. Evangelist, it's so good to see you here and it's so wonderful to see you here. You know this and Poppy don't have to tell you this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I don't care if a hundred souls pray through. It was not you that gave them the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm rejoicing over revival. I've, I've seen a hundred people in one revival receive the Holy Ghost. But to God be the glory. To God be the glory. 
He owns the miracles. He owns the miracles. They belong to him. Don't ever forget to give God the glory. <laughs> so I want you to take your miracle and head on up the hillside and take Isaac with you. I'm not going to go into that story very deeply, but I do want to tell you that how in the world did he worship up there? It's an old man and his son and God. Finally, an angel shows up. How are we going to do this? Because there was no choir. There was no orchestra. There were no enhancing lights that flash on the back wall. How we have worship service with, without that? Can I, can I just get on something here for a moment? That's, everybody knows that when I get bugged about something, I'm going to say something. When did we turn worship into music? Now, we'll use worship tomorrow. Yeah, at ease, at ease, at ease. Don't, throw, don't hit me in the back of the head, man. But, but there's something about worship that deserves better definition than to attach it to music. Boy, I, I, read, I read and I hear about, and boy, we got us a worship pastor. You got you a worship pastor, yeah. And you know, I won't tell you about some of the, the I'm, I'm talking to y'all now, not them, you know, they don't hear me. But you understand, when, when I think about, when I think about uh, this generation, and I think about some of the songs that we get brought to the platform to sing, and they don't realize that some songwriter with a talent to write songs flies in from here, flies in from there. We're going to have a songwriting session and we're going to write worship songs. And they write, one's got this line that works and the other's brilliant mind's got that line that works and finally they put a song together. You want me to sing some of them for you? I've heard them everywhere I go. I just, you know, I'm getting to be Getting to be a cranky old man. I, sorry about that. <laughs> but but you, under, you understand what's wrong with songs like we sang here today and last night? Mm, something about the depth of them. Something. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got to remember, worship is laying down at the feet of Jesus. Worship is submitting ourselves, committing ourselves in obedience to God. It's more, it's more, it's more than dancing and music and, and lights and, and choirs. Let that be a part of another phase of what we do. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. But oh God, right now I want to tell you, folks, worshiping God is serious. Worshiping God requires obedience. Requires submission. And it follows through all the way through the Bible to the woman at the well. Let's talk about that woman at the well. He met her there. And she drew water and he, 
it prompted a question, what, what are you doing drawing me a Samaritan water? And uh, he went on and explained it. But Jesus always had a way of finally getting around to the real truth of the matter and where she really was. He had supply of forgiveness and mercy to deal with her adulterous life. He had compassion. But he finally reached the real need of the lady. She didn't know what she was worshiping. She didn't know who he really was. But when he revealed himself to her and he began to probe her heart and to tell her, let me tell you what, he could have, he could have, and a preacher could have, took the confession of that woman and preached a whole sermon on immorality. But the real issue was not her immorality. I mean, she needed that dealt with. But there's only one way to deal with it. For her to submit herself and be obedient to the one talking to her. And worship him. And worship him. And worship him. Do you understand? We got to get folks that are in sin. That they're in the depths of sin. We need to teach them that there's a God that'll forgive you. There's a God that'll help you. The only way you can help, he can help you is if you worship him. Worship him. Fall on your face. Prostrate. Prostrate before him. Man. The Jewish history depicts depicts this scene of one before the presence of God as being totally paralyzed by the awesomeness of God and also that their hands are not clinging to anything. Their hands don't have hold of anything. Because they're totally submitted. The hand is open. Boy, I tell you, there's nothing like living for God. There's, there's nothing like having an open hand toward God. I'm not talking about a charismatic teaching of how your hands ought to be when you... Oh, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about apostolic spiritually. We are, we are so blessed. There has been nothing like seeing the things that I have clung to that God had to pry my hands off of things. I've learned to just be open-handed, open-handed, open-handed. God, if you got something you want to give, pass it on through here because I'll pass it right on to your will, whatever. Has anybody here learned that, that God really works like that? Mm, more blessed to give than receive. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. They just, just bring it by here. I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on. I ain't going to tell you about myself right now. But, you know, you, you look down the highway and you think, boy, it's, it's further back that way than it is up here. <laughs> and uh, the years are winding down. But, oh, I'm so glad I learned some lessons in life about having hands. There was a, I hate using denominal uh, illustration, but uh, the late Corey Ten Boom said, I have learned to hold all things lightly so that God will not have to pry them out of my hands. You don't own them. You don't own them. I know we're turning a little bit here because I got to keep my promise and, and, and get us out of here. But, oh, God, don't cause me to live in such a lifestyle that I have a grip on things. It don't have to be a grip on the world. It can just be a grip on things you love. 
Abraham, you love Isaac, but you open your hand. He's mine. He's my miracle. I gave him to you. You didn't create him. I brought him into this world. I caused your wife to conceive. I caused this to be the miracle of your life. And it belongs to me. Take your hand loose from it. I hope this makes sense to somebody. Oh, I'm clinging, 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 clinging. Oh, you know what? I, you know what a preacher has to do. I, I know that that our guest evangelist last night is already. You know, Brother Dudley, it is a hard thing when people come up and say, "Oh, that was so magnificent. That was so great." It's hard to transfer that. This flesh don't want to transfer that to God. And sometimes when you sing, the good old saints of God, they come up and compliment you and your music. And, and you say, well, maybe I am getting, get your hand off of it. Get your hand off of it. Take your hand off of it. Take your hand off of it. Oh, I know that in me is no good thing. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Help me to be obedient, submissive. Let, let my worship be submissive to you, God. Obedience to you, God. And let me keep my hands open and off of the things that pertain to you. Mm -mm. Look at these handsome young men up here. Boy, them's good looking clothes y'all wearing. Mama Jay bought me probably this before COVID. I'm still wearing it to preach in. But ain't it a nice suit? It's my suit. I'm sorry. God provided the suit and the tie. God provided the automobile. I, it's yours, God. It's yours, God. It's yours, God. <laughs> Let me tell you about an act of worship. I had a 72 GMC truck and I, I, it was given to me and I put some money in the paint job. I mean, it was pristine showroom. Mm -mm -mm. I got pictures of it. Boy, I, you know, <laughs> I, and had four on the floor. Yeah, and it, boy, it had, it had a camper special 402 engine in it. It had special mus mufflers that, you know, for an old man, sound pretty good to me. <laughs> and one day, God said, that's my truck and I want it. You have a building that needs paid for. So I just drove it right up to the neighbor that wanted it and he gave me my money. I took it and put it in the building fund. Mm -mm. You said you were at Heritage, and 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 where's Brother Ballinger? You're going to be out there. See if see if Brother John Collins will show you. I was going up my steps to go over to Heritage Bishop's breakfast, and God spoke to me and said, "I want that Stratocaster." And I said, "Well, it's yours, Lord." And I went and got it. And before the day was out that morning, with that red Stratocaster sitting in front of the little desk, man, ministers began to say, I want to give an offering for it. I'll give an offering for it. Before it's over, there were $42,000. It was God's. I'm taking credit for that. No, I'm not taking credit for that. You know, I started building guitars, and, and I started, uh, I started uh, building them. People send me requests. I'm on number 37 right now, and, and I'm building them, I'm building them. 
And last year, uh, folks say, how much has been raised? How much has been raised? I said, about 300000 so far. And you know, I got, I'm convicted of even telling you that right now. I don't really care how much. It's none of my business. It's God's. It's God's. It's God's. It's God's. What are you saying? I'm, I'm trying to be an example to you to tell you. Let it flow. Let it go. Don't hold on to it. Don't cling to it. <clears throat> That's what worship is. That's what worship is. God, we worship you. We're submitted. We're obedient to you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Do you understand a little better why I'm talking about worship today? And we worship him with all our hearts. I have no idea what time it is. I guess it don't matter. But there's something in my heart today that bleeds for modern Pentecost. God, we, th we think it's all in the, in the lights and smoke and not, not, not our group, but some do. Higher education, that's the thing. Go on. No, I don't want you to grow up and be a dummy, but be thankful. I'm not going not to promote it. You do it, and if you can afford it, you go do it. I don't know why I mentioned that, but it's become a god among some. Brother Morton, you and I are nothing but dummies in their sight. Well, we're probably dummies in our own sight. But oh, thank God we've lived for God this far. We've, we don't regret a mile. We don't regret one thing. Don't you wish, don't you wish you had your 72 back? Nope. God wants me to have one. I'll get a better one than that. And I'll give it back too. I'll just give it back too. You know, I'm, I'm building a, a, a Stratocaster right now like nothing you ever saw. And I told my wife, this one is mine. Nobody getting this one. She said, oh. I said, yeah, well, $50,000 offering would be just fine. <laughs> you know, we get so possessive of things. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Why am I back on this? I didn't, I meant to hit this just passing. But we, we sometimes can be the most self-centered. Mine, mine, mine. Oh, Lord, nothing we have is really ours. I remember Tommy Bracken, brother Tommy Bracken, preaching in, in, in Twin Falls a couple of years ago. And, and he, he preached, then who shall these things be? Talking to teenagers and young people, when it's all finished, who shall these things be? Mm. Who will they belong to? Whose will they be? You know, Someone used the word icon. I thank you for that great compliment. That, that, made, that warmed my heart. But I have to tell you, it won't take. When we're gone, Elder, it won't take many years they done forget who we were. We're just a vapor in the wind. Oh, but I got something over there that nobody can get. I told the devil one time, I said, I got a record on high of all the things I ever did, ever done. They're on high. They're up there. Go ahead, devil. Go up and get them. I don't think they'll let you in to view my record because they done kicked you out once and they're not about to let you back in because he doesn't want you to accuse us. Hallelujah. Let's all just keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Perhaps you have, perhaps you have, you know, we got to get into the service. And I like that. 
but we, we need to get into God and get into obedience and get into submission to him. Pastors will agree with me as I close. You be ready and y'all be ready. We really don't like to see people running the aisle that's not submitted to God or obedient to God. We just, we think it's a dangerous thing. We think it's damaging to the spiritual conscience of an individual to be hooping and running and jumping and there's no submission to the pulpit. Mm. I can tell you something humorous and I will and then I'll move on. When I was a kid, there was an Indian couple. Back then when I was a kid, they still called him chief and they still had the, the, the Indian whatever, vernacular. And the woman came to the pastor and said to him, said, said chief, he hypocrite. She said, what do you mean? He said, what do you mean? He said, him hypocrite. We'll explain that a little bit. Said, yeah. Said, he go drink all night, come home, Sunday morning he go to church, he hoop him up Jesus. I know that's a little bit humorous. That's, that's the epitome of a hypocrite. We're here talking about worship today. We're here talking about, well, I hope I hadn't taken your mind away from what I'm talking about, biblical worship. When we present ourselves in his presence and oh God, I'm, I'm here, let the first song that happens, let it be vibrant, let it show the glory of Pentecost. But God, when I step to my pew in my place, let me be submitted, let me be obedient, let me, oh God, worship you in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. That's a small S right there. That's a small T. So Lord, let me worship you with my spirit. And Lord, with a truthful spirit. God, let me worship you. Let me worship you. Let me worship you. I think we ought to step down here and present ourselves in the presence of God with hands lifted. If you're not willing to say, God, it's yours. It's yours. Then, then shouldn't come. But God, it belongs to you. Doesn't belong to me. I'm being obedient. Oh God. How many services have there been where out of a crowd walked a couple? They said, we're not our own. We belong to you. And God took them and used them in some church somewhere. Use them somewhere on a foreign field. Use because I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours, Lord. I don't belong to myself. I belong to you. I'm totally submitted. Whatever you say today, God, I'll climb that mountain. I'll take whatever you want me to. But it's yours, Lord. It's yours, Lord. Could we sing?